So in this video, we're going to be building this advanced carousel. It's, it's based off of the basic image wheel carousel I did a video on previously. Uh, I won't be going over that code because if I did, this video would easily be 30, 35 minutes longer than it is. So you need to know how to set this up before you advance on this, uh, this video. I'll have a link in the description below or a card on the top right. Now, what makes this so advanced? Well, we have two things happening. We have snap points. So we can pick any one of these cards to be a snapping point, as well as the images now stay upright. So the snapping point currently is the top image right here. Watch what happens when I spin the wheel. It stops, and the nearest card to that point becomes the active one. It snaps, so there's symmetry on the Y and X axes. And of course, visual feedback for the user. It becomes larger, the other cards shrink, I can keep spinning, and the same behavior. We can pick any of these images to be the snapping point. And so if this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. Okay, so a bit of housekeeping or streamlining before we actually begin. In the last video, the basic wheel image carousel, we were converting our, right here, we're converting our radians to degrees right here. I'm gonna take that away from this line so that we don't have to think about radians and degrees for the, the rest of the video. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna take this away. We're gonna convert the input. Let me show you what the input is, first of all. So console.log, content delta y, save, go back, console. All right, so pay attention to the console. That's the input. These are not degrees. These are the, uh, the number system that HTML uses, whatever number system they use. We wanna convert these numbers into degrees so right when we get the numbers, the event.delta y, we're just going to normalize into a 360 degree system by doing something like this. We're just going to divide by 360. So divided by 360, save. Now watch, I'm scrolling really fast, but it's scrolling really slow. So we're just going to magnify that by 20. But the important part is the input we get from the mouse, we're normalizing into a 360 degree system right away. This is the important line. Just a bit of housekeeping so we can, we don't have to think in terms of radians and degrees constantly. So as soon as we get the event.delta y, we convert it to 360 degrees. We're just speeding it up by 20 so we get this behavior here. I scroll fast, we go fast. I scroll slow, we go slow. All right, so with that out of the way, let's solve one half of the puzzle. How do we get these images to stay upright? Well, what happens if we spin our wheel this way? If we spin our images in the opposite direction? See what happens then. So let me just put a space here. So we'll do a for loop or a for each loop card. There we go. And then we can just say, we can copy this line right here. We just want to go in the opposite direction the wheel's going. So instead of wheel, we'll go card. We'll go translate. Instead of this wheel dot theta, we'll do negative 1.0 times your wheel theta. We go back and I scroll and all just like that. Our images are staying upright. So we solved one half of the puzzle. The bulk of this video is going to be the snapping points. Before we do the snapping points, we need to know when the wheel stops. Because when the wheel stops, let's say we start here. When the wheel stops right here, everything's misaligned. We want the wheel to automatically snap so it's symmetrical like that. But we need to know when the wheel stops. Now, how do we know that? Let's go here. Let me show you. Every time we scroll the wheel, event, let's do event. And so every time we scroll the wheel, it fires an event. Even if I, I'm going to flick the, uh, the trackpad, I'm flicking it. I'm not really scrolling physically, but it's still going. So as long as this wheel's spinning, even without my active input, it's firing off these events. How do we know when this guy, this last guy gets fired? Well, we're going to use a little mechanism. We're going to set a timeout. So we're going to say, let's do a let. So we'll do let wheel in progress. Progress, we're gonna say equals false. And then we're just gonna go right down here. We're gonna say set timeout. And then I'll just do an alert for now. So alert, and I'll say wheel has stopped. And I'll put a time of 100. I got that from trial and error. So I save, I go back, I'm gonna scroll, 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 and the wheel has stopped. Now this is firing, I click okay, 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 okay. Clicking okay multiple times, it's fired multiple times. So that set timeout is fired, I don't know, maybe like 50 times right there. How do we get it to fire only on the last guy? Well, what if we said the set timeout gives us an ID for that timer? What if we said wheel in progress is equal to that ID? As soon as any event fires for this wheel, clear the timer. So we say clear timeout and we give it the ID. 
I save, I go back, I scroll, 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 pay attention to the right, or not even the right, the alert. So it's gonna stop, and we get the alert. So what happened? Well, instead of alerting, let's do this. Console.log, the event, we save, I'm gonna spin a bit. All right, so how do we, how do we uh, make it so that we know when the last guy gets fired? Well, in every single event, it sets this timer right here, right down here. But also, in every single event, it clears that timer. And so, if we have this guy right here, he sets a timer. The next guy clears this previous guy's timer and sets a new timer. And the next guy clears this guy's timer and sets a new timer. And we go all the way down here, and finally, this guy right down here, he clears the previous timer, sets his own timer. But because there's no other event, this guy's timer doesn't get cleared out. This is how we know when, let me just go back here. This is how we know when the wheel has stopped spinning. So let me just do this, we don't need that, we don't need that, and we're gonna call a function. So when the wheel stops, we're just gonna call a function called snap back. Snap back, there we go. Let's write the function here. We'll do function snap back. Okay. So how should we think about the uh, the snapping back action? Well, let's draw it first, and then I'll explain it uh, mathematically. We're going to use trigonometry. So let's say we have a circle. Let me can I do that. Perfect. So we have a circle. This is a circle wheel, not red to black. So that's our circle wheel right there. Let's do a better circle. There we go. So we have a circle. We're going to define a snapping point. Our snapping point is going to be the zero degrees. So this is the center of our circle right here. And any image that goes near this right here, zero degrees, snapping point is equal to zero degrees. The wheel is going to rotate, so the image is centered right here. So that's our snapping point. Let's just say there's an image here. These green dots are the center of images. This green dot here, there's a center of image here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. All these don't really matter, just these two matter. So we have our snapping point, we have our images set up around the circle. How do we know which image is closest to the snapping point? Well, this is where trigonometry comes in. And so I'm going to explain it visually, and then I'll show you the math behind it. What if we calculated the distance between the snapping point and the center of this circle, and the snapping point and the center of this circle, and the snapping point and the center of this circle, and then this one as well, 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 and of course this one as well. Well, the shortest distance would obviously be the image that's closest to the snapping point. So once we know the shortest vector, you can call these vectors if you want, the shortest distance, shortest vector, we know to rotate the wheel by this many degrees. Whatever those degrees are, that's uh, how we rotate the wheel. And of course, when we rotate the wheel, the image will show up right there. Now, what does this look like mathematically? Well, a bit of trigonometry. So let's say we have a snapping point here. So this snapping point has a certain x and y calls x1, y1, and then we have, let's say, the center of an image here. How do we know the distance between these two points? Well, if we draw a right angle triangle, forgive the, uh, the crude lines, if we draw a right angle triangle and we know the x and we know the y, there's a, a formula that lets us know the distance. You may have seen it in your high school. It's the a squared, the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. In this case, it's going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to our h squared. We want to isolate for h, so h is equal to square root of our x squared plus y squared, and there we go. Now, how do we know x and y? Well, if we know the x and y of our snapping point, we know the x and y of our image, let's say this x2, y2. Well, the x is just the difference between this x and this x, and the y is the difference between this y and this y. So our formula in the code it's going to look like this. And in the code, it's going to look really messy. That's unfortunately how we program, how the, how the language is written. But the code is going to look like something like this. It's going to be, let's say, the square root. It's going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that will give us the distance. So let's go into the code. We're going to establish a snapping point. Then we're going to loop through, we're going to use this formula here to calculate all the distances, and then we're going to take the shortest distance. And the shortest distance is, of course, the closest image to the, uh, the snapping point. 
So let's get these snapping points uh, x and y coordinates first. So let actually be a const snap point equal. I'll just create an object. It's easier to compartmentalize. So x and there's a y. And the x is just going to be, what is it going to be? Let's say the snap point. And we're going to use the uh, the zero degree right here. So we'll just say card zero dot get bounding client rect dot x. And then we can just copy this line and paste for the y. There we go. And we need to add 100 to this guy. And I'll tell you why in a second. 100 and 100. All right, so that client get bounding client rect, that gives us the, let me just turn these images to uh, divs so you can see what I'm talking about. Close that. Comment that out. Comment that out. Comment this back in. All right, so get bounding client rect. It gives us the top left of our divs. We want the center and the size of our images, not these guys, but the rounds are 200 by 200. So to get to the center, we need to go 200 in X and 200 in Y. So that's why we're adding the, uh, the 100s right here. All right, so we have the snapping point X and Y. Now we need to, let's say, shortest distance. There we go. We need to pick any of these cards to be a shortest distance. We need something to measure by, a default measure. So we're just going to pick card, doesn't matter, we're going to card three. So we're going to say card three. We're writing this formula now in the code. It's going to look messy, but just understand that we're using the uh, Pythagorean theorem to calculate the, uh, the distance here. So let's just do the x's and y's first. So we'll just say cards three dot get bounding dot x plus 100. And again, just going to look really messy and plus 100, and then we need to subtract the snap point dot x. And then we're gonna square that with a, well, let's just do this first and then we'll square it. That's gonna be a plus, and that's gonna be the same thing. So cards three dot get bounding client dot y plus 100, because we want the center of the card, and that's gonna be minus snap point y dot y, and then we need to square these guys. So we're going to say math.pow, there we go, and we're going to square it right here. And the exact same for this guy. So math.pow, and we square it right here. All right, so we've squared it, now we need the square root of it. We're right on a different line so it doesn't look so messy. So shortest distance is equal to math.square root of the shortest distance. Let's print that out. Console.log and shortest distance. All right, I save. Let's go back to this. We're gonna rotate. When we stop, we call the snap back function and we get this. So the distance between our snap point, which is somewhere around here, and the middle of card three is 41. Let's spin again. Yeah, the distance between our snap point, which is somewhere around here, that zero degree mark, and all the way over to the middle of card three is now 498. All right, so we've calculated the distance between, uh, just an arbitrary distance that we have to start with. Now let's loop through the circle, compare the shortest distance with all of the distances of the cards. So we'll just need a loop, so we'll do card, cards dot for each, and I'll take the card and the index. So card index, all right. So we need to calculate the distance again. So let's just say, I want to separate it so it doesn't look so messy. I'm just going to say let dx equal, and this is going to be the change in the x between the snap point and the current card. So we can just say card dot get bounding rect dot x plus 100 minus snap point dot x. And then we can copy paste. The change in y is just the y plus 100 minus snap point y. And then let's uh, square those two. So let's say let current distance equal math.pow of dx squared plus math.pow of dy squared. And then let's just do the, uh, the square root now. So current distance is equal to math.square root of our current distance. 
And then let's print that out. So console.log and we'll say card plus index plus let's do a separator. We'll just do plus current distance. Save. We go back, spin the wheel, we stop. And so there we go. So card zero from our origin right here. Card zero is 490, 84 pixels away. Card four is 123. Card three, which looks like to be the uh, the closest card. Card three is 71 pixels. All right, so we have all the, the distances. We just need to capture the shortest distance with an if clause. So we'll say, actually don't delete that line. If the shortest distance is greater than the current distance, that means our shortest distance needs to become the current distance. The current distance like this. Let's also save the card that we're working on. So we'll say, let closest, closest, there we go, card equal null. And we'll say that the when we find the shortest distance, the closest card is equal to that card with the shortest distance. Equals card. All right. Let's do this. Console.log, all those things. And after the loop, we'll just console.log the closest card. And we'll console.log that distance. So shortest distance. Save, go back, spin the wheel. All right. So these are all the distances. By the looks of it, card four is the, uh, the shortest one. So card four has a distance of 79. And then we'll do right here. So we get the closest card, which is four, which is accurate. And the closest or shortest distance, 79, which is also accurate. So we know based on our math here, which card is closest to our snapping point. Now all we need to do is calculate the angles and then rotate the wheel. So that closest card snaps to the snapping point like that. Let me turn these guys back into uh, images. Let's go up here. Come with these guys out. Let's go back to our 200 by 200. Okay, so how should we think about uh, how many degrees do we need to rotate the wheel in order to get the image to snap to the snap point? Let me comment these guys out and then we'll, we'll draw it visually and then we'll go over it mathematically just with the like with the, uh, the distance work here. So we did all the distance work. We know the shortest distance. We know the closest card. We now need to know this part right. Not that part right there. Not that either. We need to know this right here. We need to know how many degrees to rotate the wheel by. So let's move over. Let's draw a new circle. Ink to shape is on. Ink to shape is on. Let's see if I can draw a circle. Okay, so we have a circle. Let's do ink to shape off. All right, so at the center of a circle, we have a snap point. We have the closest image right here. Let's just say it's right here. How do we know how many degrees this is, the, the, uh, the difference? Well, we're going to need to calculate the center of a circle. So we're gonna go into the code and do that. We need to calculate two things. So let's draw it right here. Let's say we had our snap point here and we had the center of our circle here. And just for the sake of argument, Let's say the snap point is not at zero degrees because it's going to look crummy. So just say our snap point is at, I don't know, let's just say snap points here, center of circles here. How do we know this? This is called theta. The sign here, it's called theta. It represents the angle. So how do we know what this angle is? Well, just like we use the Pythagorean theorem to know the distance right here, we can also use a trigonometric function called tan. So tan of theta of your angle is going to be equal to your opposite over your adjacent or your y over your x. So if we can calculate the y and the x and we just say tan of, so tan of theta is equal to y over x. If you want to know what the theta is, you just take the inverse of this function. So you may have seen it written like this, negative 1, or you may have seen it written as the arc, that's ugly, the arc tangent. We'll just use the negative one here. So our 10 to negative one, or the inverse of 10 of your y over your x is equal to your theta. So if we can get the y, we can get the x, we plug it into this little formula here, we can get the, the degree shift here. And so if we can get the degree of here, whatever degree that is, then we use the exact same formula to get the degrees of here. We get green for that. 
the degree shift here. If we just take the difference between these degrees, so whatever this degree is, minus, let's use black for that, minus the degree of where the image is. Let's do that. Then we'll get the difference between those. We'll get the theta between this, some sort of shift. And we'll just rotate the, uh, the wheel by this angle. And so in order to uh, do this formula here, get the X's and Y's, we need to know the center of our, uh, of our wheel. So we're just gonna do, let me just draw it on the wheel, it's gonna look better. So just say for the sake of argument, this is the image here. This would be the X, or this would be the Y. This would be the X, that's the hypotenuse. Of course, the, this has an X1, let's say Y1. And the center of our circle has a X2, Y2. To get the X and the Y shift, we just need to take X2, or it doesn't matter, let's we'll use X1 minus X2, and Y1 minus Y2. That'll give us the X and the Y. We can plug it into this, and we'll get the theta. Let's go into the, uh, the code and do this. So we need to start with uh, the center of our wheel. So we'll just say const center of wheel is equal to another object just to keep it organized. We have an X and we have a Y. And do we, do we capture the wheel up here? Yes, we did. We have the wheel right here on line 77. So we'll say X is equal to get computed style of the wheel and the X is gonna be the left. And then we're gonna say get computed style of the wheel, and the Y is gonna be the top. Now these guys are strings, we wanna do math with them, so we're gonna parse them into floats. So parse float, there we go. And with this guy as well, so parse float. All right, so we know the center of our wheel, we just need to calculate the thetas now. So let's calculate the theta of our snap point. And again, it's kind of inconvenient because the theta of our snap point is zero, so you can't really draw a triangle with zero but the math still works. So let's just calculate the theta, the degree to our snap point. So snap point dot theta. So I'm just adding to this object a property called theta. That's gonna be equal to all of this business here. So it's gonna be math. Dot, again, it's gonna look crummy like this, but it's just unfortunate the way uh, you have to use these things with JavaScript. But just understand, it's this simple equation right here. So math a 10 2 and then we need a y and we need an x. So we're gonna have to say our snap point dot y minus the center of wheel y dot y. And that's gonna be our y. And we need to put that over a, an x. So we'll just do a comma here. And we'll say that the snap point x minus the center of wheel dot x. And we don't care about whether or not these, uh, these distances or negative or positive. So we're just gonna take the absolute, so it's always a positive number. So absolute, and again, it looks crummy, but just understand what we're doing mathematically. We're just taking the arctangent, or the, the inverse function of the tangent, to calculate the degree between a two points. So absolute, absolute, and this will return a, it won't return degrees, it returns radians, so we need to convert this into degrees. So we'll just do snap point dot theta, is equal to snap point dot theta, and we'll times it by that ratio. So 180 over math dot pi converts radians into degrees. So let's say, let's see if I did this right, math point, math point. All right, let's see if I did it. Let's just do a console dot log of the snap point. It should be something like 0 0.0000027 or something like that. Save, go back, here. All right, there it is. So this is the, uh, the degree of the snap point somewhere around here. So it's 0 0.000027, which is basically zero. So let's do the exact same thing, but for the closest card. And we know the closest card because we looped through here. We got the shortest distance. We saved the card with the shortest distance. So once we're done the loop, we'll just calculate the, uh, the, uh, the theta of the shortest card right here, or the closest card. So let's just do, yeah, I'll, I'll define it here, whatever. Say let shortest or closest cards theta equal, and should I just copy paste that stuff? It's gonna get all messy, so I'll just do this. Let me separate the uh, the variables. So let's just closest cards. I need its x value. So x is equal to, and this one is going to be closest card dot get bounding dot x plus one hundred. Copy paste. 
and this is going to be the y value. Closest card's y. All right, so we have the x and the y. We just need to copy and paste this formula right here. So yank, paste down here. All right, so it's no longer the, is that the right formula? That doesn't look like the right formula. This guy up here, the tangent formula. All right, so arc 10, absolute value, not the snap point. We need the closest cards X minus the center of the wheel, perfect, and not snap point. We need the closest cards Y. Excuse me, this should be Y right here. Closest cards Y should be closest cards X. Closest cards X, there we go. Y minus center Y, X minus center X, and then we convert into degrees. So closest card theta, see what closest card theta times that ratio, 180 over math.py. So let's print that guy out. And closest cards theta. We'll save, we spin the wheel. So that's our snap point right here, 0 0.00027. Spin the wheel, so wheel stops, runs a snapback function, and get bound inclined of null. That's snapback 145. And 145, which is this line right here, why is there no closest card? Oh, I see. Okay, so in our if statement right here, it needs to be greater than or equal to. So we save, we go back. Now it's because our snap point, the third card, which was the default card here, that was ending up closest to the snap point because we didn't have the equal sign in our conditional. The card here, this part, never fired. So now when we spin, let's get the third card close. All right, so that's the third card. Let's put that out like this. Closest card. All right, so spin. All right, so the closest card is the icon right here. That's perfect. And the distance between the zero degree, the snap point, and where this is, is 19 degrees. So we now know this guy right here. We now know the degree we need to shift by. So we can copy and paste this code here. When we spun the wheel, let's just spin it again. So after we know the cards theta, wheel that style that transform, and let's do this. So we know the degree shift, let's save the degree shift. So theta between, and it's just gonna be equal to, I don't know, let's just say the closest cards theta minus the, what was it gonna be? The snap point theta, point dot theta. All right, and then we can just say wheel theta, and we'll add the theta between, and then we need to save that uh, the shift in the wheel, because currently we're just adding it right in here, but if we spin the wheel again, it's gonna throw off the wheel. So we all, always need to save where the wheel is. So we'll just say wheel theta, and I'll just say equal wheel theta, plus that theta between. All right, it's negative 50, negative 50, and let's just do a duration. Say wheel that style that transition duration. Let's say one second. See what that looks like. So I'll spin the wheel. And it's spinning back. Not quite aligned, and for a reason I'll get to in a second, but at least it's snapping back. And of course the uh the images are not rotating with the uh with the wheel because we haven't copied the the loop yet. So let's go back. And let's maintain this. So just like we spun the images in the opposite direction, let's do that down here as well. For each, negative one times wheel theta, and that should be plus theta between. All right, so we save, we go back, and let's add a duration as well for that. Car.style.transition duration, and we'll say one second as well. All right, save, go back, spin, stops, snaps back to a point, and the uh, the images stay upright. Now, why isn't snapping right back to the uh, the actual point? Well, our problems are many, so let's uh, let's fix a, a bug first. So when I scroll like this, it's not going to snap back to the point perfectly. We'll get to that in a second. But when I scroll again, watch the uh, the behavior. So I scroll again, and I'm scrolling and it's getting all wonky like this. This is because we set a 
duration of one second for a snapback, which is cool. It makes it look good. But uh, right up here, when we spin the wheel again, the duration is one second. So there's a one second, uh, I wouldn't say a delay, but it's compounding on itself. So it's not rotating properly when you rotate it again. So every time we change the duration here, we need to change it back to what we actually want before we do a transform. So we'll just do wheel.style.transform, or transition duration, excuse me. And we'll set that back to zero. We want a, a zero lag between when they scroll their wheel and when the image scrolls on the, uh, on the front end. And we need to do it for the card as well. So card.style.transition duration and zero lag there. I go back, I scroll once. It snaps back, which is a one second duration. I scroll again and it's fixed. All right, so let's fix the uh, correct, the incorrect snapping. So what's going on here? Well, it depends on this. So our theta right here, it might be negative, it might be positive, depending on what these values are. We'll take the positive value only. Now we go here and let me draw it up for you. So what's happening? Why isn't it snapping where it should be snapping? Well, all we have is the difference in between, the theta between. Just say call it theta between. Theta between. But we're spinning around a wheel. Depending on where we are on the wheel, we need to either go negative or positive. So we need to determine that. So let's just say this is our Y, this is our X. Depending on which quadrant we are, so this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, we want different behaviors, so quadrant four. So let's say our image is right, so our snapping point is right here. Let's say our image, the closest image is right here. Well, we want to shift the wheel in this direction. That's a positive theta. If the image was here, we want to shift the wheel in that direction. That's a negative theta. But what happens if our snapping point was somewhere, I don't know, let's say here. Actually, no, put our snapping point here. And the image, the closest image was here. Well, we need to shift the wheel in a negative direction. And this going up would be a positive direction. So it's the opposite from here. So we need to code for each quadrant. If the snapping point is here, we need a positive negative in a certain way. The snapping point's here, positive negative in a certain way, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna copy and paste some code and then I'll explain it to you guys. So I know this code looks uh, complicated. All it's doing is it's measuring where the, uh, the closest card is relative to the center. And so if the X and the Y are both positive, then we know the closest card to our snapping point, whether or not the snapping point is here or here or here or here, it doesn't matter. Wherever the closest card is, if the X is positive and the Y is positive, we're obviously in quadrant one. If the X is negative, but the Y is positive, we're obviously in quadrant two. If the X is negative and the Y is negative, we are in quadrant three. And if the X is positive and the Y is negative, we're in quadrant four. So it's all this conditional block does is if we're in quadrant one and the, uh, the closest card is greater than our snap point. So if we're, our snap point is, let's say our snap point's right here, it doesn't matter. If the greater, greatest card, the closest card, excuse me, is greater than the, the snapping point, we obviously want to go in the positive direction. That's what this part says here. So if the closest card, that its angle, is greater than the snap point's angle, then we want a positive theta. Else, we want a negative theta. In quadrant two, if the, where are we? If the closest card is less than, excuse me, the closest card's theta is greater than the snap point's theta, we want a negative theta. And if it's not, we want a positive. So I know it looks confusing, just understand we're, we're coding for each quadrant, which way to spin the wheel. So I say if I go back, the snapping point is right here at the zero. And so this guy should snap right back down to the zero. So let me scroll up and it snaps back down. If I scroll down, it should snap right back up to the zero. Scroll down and let's just spin the wheel like this. Snap to zero. All right, so I'll explain the uh, why it's snapping so quickly. So why is it snapping so quickly? That's because we have no uh, delay plus where, uh, 
I'll show you in a second. So let's add a delay in. So before we, so as soon as the wheel stops, we don't want to automatically start our our, uh, our transition. We want to delay and then it to smooth into the uh, into the duration here. So we're just going to say wheel dot style that transition delay, and we'll just make I don't know like a zero point one second delay, and we'll do that with the cards as well. So card dot style dot transition delay is equal to zero point one second. And let's spin. All right, let's spin again. Now it's not spinning. And that's because we've added de a delay here. But just like when we added a duration here, we had to get rid of the duration here to get rid of the lag. So wheel dot style that transition delay back to a zero delay. There we go. And as well for the cards. So card dot style dot transition delay is equal to zero as well. All right. Save, spin, snap back to zero. Perfect spin, snap back to zero. How about we spin, and I'm gonna spin while it's transitioning. Spin while it's transitioning. I'm trying to break the wheel right now to show you guys some other behavior that I need to code for. All right, I can't show you the behavior, but I'm gonna code for uh, this. So while we're, uh, while we're snapping back, we can still spin. That's still adding to the wheel theta. So it could create some sort of jank. It sometimes shows, it sometimes doesn't. But let's just code for that eventuality. So just like we had to have some sort of timeout right here, we're going to have a timeout in our snapback. So while we're snapping, we don't want any sort of wheel input yet. So we're going to say something like this. We're just going to go let, say, snap in progress equals to false. And so when we snap back, we're going to set that to true. Let me get rid of this line right here. So when we snap back, we're snapping. So snap back's in progress. It's equal to true. And then we go through all of our snapping motion, all of the animation. And then down here, we're going to set a timeout. And let's just set a little timer of 200. Now what we could do is completely eliminate them from uh, scrolling by adding up these values here. So it takes about one second plus a 0.1 second delay. So that's a 1100 millisecond uh, complete timing for this animation. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna say a small little delay of 200. And so once we time out, we're just gonna put snap in progress to equal to false. And so while snap is true, so while it's snapping, we don't want them to spin the wheel or have the ability to spin the wheel. So what we're gonna say is if there's a snap in progress, just return. If there's no snap in progress, then you're free to spin the wheel. So we'll just copy all this. There we go, paste it in here. Do a bit of formatting. Let's change the snapping point. So currently our snapping point's at zero. Let's change it to, this is zero, one, two, let's say three, the third card. So we can just change right here. Card zero, card three. So any card that falls close to this point here, it should snap to that area. So let's spin. And it stops, and there we go. So we can pick any card, OBJ should snap down, perfect. Pick any card and that'll become our new snapping point. Now to uh, finish this up, our snapping point, that card, whatever card lands on the snapping point, that should expand, and the rest of the cards should shrink. And since we just have all of the animation set down here, we can just add it right here. So we're gonna say, if the closest card that we have, we calculated with the shortest distance is equal to the current card that we're looping through right here. This is a loop. They want to expand that card. So we're gonna have a different transition or transform, excuse me. Else, it's just a normal card and we'll do a different translation. So it's still gonna be the 0 0.1 in one second business, but let's do this. So if you're the main card, we want to scale you up. So we're just gonna add a scale of, let's go one point two i think i did if you're not a main card we'll scale you down by i think 0 0.7 0 0.8 we'll see what it looks like and also the z index of the first card or the active card should be above every other so it overlays it overlaps every other card so we'll just do a card dot style dot z index is equal to 100 and for these guys normal cards we'll just say yeah back down to one all right, so let's spin the wheel, and our snapping point is card. Let's pick a different one. 
So let's say zero, one, two, three, four, how about two? This top card right here. So the snapping point is gonna be the second card. There we go. We save, we spin, 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 stops, and OBJ should snap. There we go. And those cards are not small enough. Let's go zero point, what did I say? Zero point seven? Let's do zero point. And that's my uh my tablet. Let's say zero point five. Try that. All right, so snapping points at the top, the crown. We spin, 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 and there we go. So that's the functionality of an advanced image carousel. I know it was, a, it was a lot to go through. There's a lot of math involved, but it produces something beautiful like this. So anything worth anything is going to be a bit complicated. So if this video helped you at all, don't forget to give a like. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.